Good evening. Welcome to the August 16, 2016 meeting of the Milford Planning and Zoning Commission. If I could ask you at this time to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May we have a uh, roll call from left to right, please. Richard Lutz. Mike Dolan. John Grant. Edward Mead. Carl S. Moore. Scott Marlowe. Tom Panzella. Jim Quish. And I'm Anthony Sutton, Chairman, and we are joined this evening by David Sulkis, City Planner, and Phyllis Leggett, our Board Clerk. First item on the agenda this evening in new business is 528 Wheeler's Farms Road, Boys and Girls Village, the petition of John Wicko Architect for a temporary minor amendment to a site plan review to temporary place two classroom trailers on an existing basketball court located on map 104, block 915, parcels 13 and 13A, of which Village Foundation LLC, AKA Boys and Girls Village, is the owner. Good evening, sir. Good evening, thank you. John Wicko, 50 Broad Street, here in Milford. Thanks for hearing us. We have um, a fall time situation where we're trying to get some temporary classrooms in to the Boys and Girls Village to house the um, expanding upper school program, which is basically high school kids. They need room for, for their student body to uh, move up in grade. So, um, it is part of a state um, program that they're involved in and helping the state provide to meet their, their intentions um, with the social services. Um, Boys and Girls Village is a 528 uh, Wheeler's Farm Road. I think if you're familiar, all familiar with it up by the Mayor Parkway, the Wilbur Cross at that point on Wheeler's Farm. Um, got some couple notes here. Uh, we're, this is, yeah, just one of the services that they provide up at their, their campus in Milford. Um, the classes are temporary in a sense that um, they're, we're, we're working on a master plan of development, some improvements um, for the different changing programs that they have um, for several buildings up there, which will be um, before you shortly. Hopefully we're working with the city and David on some of those. Uh, one of the, the buildings, the Hayden Building, which is the upper school, um, is being proposed for a, a, a permanent expansion, which has classrooms, um, a dining hall, cafeteria, um, but that didn't, the, the two year or so program, or um, a time frame didn't coincide with what the state was, was looking for. Hence, we're here today. We did um, review the plans with the various cities' departments and everything came back um, in a favorable sense, uh, any conditions we met. Um, we have um, health department review and state approval um, due to the fact that the, the campus is, um, the sewage system is on site with the septic system, which was newly installed uh, a year ago. So we went through that process, which, um, the city greatly helped in expediting um, with the state, so we want to thank them for that. The, the classrooms themselves are they're a modular type, very similar to what you've seen in some of the public schools. Um, it's a trailer, basically, that is driven on the highway. Uh, in this case, they're, um, they're, it, it's a double wide, they call it. They, they kind of you know, bring them in and then bolt them together. And there's two buildings, which the site plan uh, shows on SP2. Um, the location is an ideal look, uh, spot for the other school facilities um, and the uh, support uh, cafeteria that's existing now. 
Um, the buildings will, are going to be connected to the city water, electric, and the site septic, which I talked about before, uh, which houses the entire campus. Um, the engineer for the project, Cotus Boating Associates, their engineer, Bob Weeway, is here also with me to um, answer any questions you might have about that system. Um, but in short, the health department liked it and the state liked it, so we're, we're good to go. I'll show you where, where it is going once I get over to the site plan. Um, maybe I'll do that. The, um, the, the building now, there's a little packet, 11 by 17. I can just flip through that and explain to you what the uh, modular company, um, Penn Lion Homes, Inc., is proposing. Uh, these are built and ready to go. Um, so there's no hold up there, luckily. The a page three is really the, the first informational page, drawing-wise, which shows the elevations. Um, the exterior siding panels are what they call 716 smart paneling, which is a smooth surface. Um, it shows the, the slide-by windows, entrance door, um, the electric HVAC units, which have one per module. There's four. Uh, again, this packet represents one of the two buildings. And page five, I believe, shows, yep, the, uh, the floor plans, which you can kind of see the configuration of the two modulars. And then each, there's two classrooms in each building and also a, a lavatory for each of the classrooms for convenience. Uh, page five shows, oh, I'm sorry, page six is the lighting. Page seven is the HVAC. Page nine, which is a little inf and has some information on it relative to the heights. Uh, nine foot ceiling interior, a 14 foot overall building. It shows the roof trusses, supporting walls, the floor system, which is the steel frame that they, they wheel these things on. And then they, we build some piers that are shown uh, from grade above, but they will be uh, below the, the frost line. And then FD1, which is the next page, shows that that peer plan, the foundation plan, as they call it. Um, just trying to move quickly. I'll go over to the to the site drawings. And describe a little. Of it. I won't take too much of your time though. The SP1 is the, uh, it's a newly prepared uh, site survey which actually shows um, the whole site, all the utilities and all the different driveways, parking and everything that are there now. This is the first time that the, the village um, has a map such like this which is very informative. Um, I can just go over quickly the, the buildings themselves. In the front is the administrative and programs building. The Hayden Student Center is the building in the center. That's the one that's going to be expanded in the future, two years plus. Um, the lower school is this building to the north, and to the west are the um, what are called the safe haven buildings, which are permanent um, housed students. Um, that, are, that need to be there for various reasons. The basketball court, which we're proposing to put the buildings on, is at the north section um, adjacent to the Wilbur Cross Parkway. That's existing already. SP2 shows the, the buildings and their configuration with a, a deck between the two entrance sides, handicap ramp with sidewalks, and egress stairs at the egress windows. As I said before, that's a great location because this is the, the, the bus drop off, the bus comes in here, turns around and drops off the students to all three buildings. And then the, the um, permanently housed students, they walk in at the appropriate times from the, from the safe haven dormitories. SP3 shows the buildings and the, the septic system connection with the soil and erosion controls that are proposed, and they've been reviewed by the city engineer. Actually, the plans of building, fire, engineering, and health departments um, looked at these for all the various, their interests. Um, the sewer goes into a, Bob can explain it better, but the, the, 
the way I understand it, they're holding tanks in a pump tank that they go in, they go gravity to there, and then they get pumped, and then follow the, the pipe along the main driveway, and then go into the, one of the new distribution boxes, um, which then goes into another holding tank, which supplies the rest of the buildings, and then that gets distributed through a brand new leaching field, which is under the parking lot and out at a portion of the front yard. And an SP4 is a bunch of those details that are um, referenced on the site plan SP3. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, there are some, actually some, the, the setback in the DO25, it's interesting that the, um, the Village Foundation, which owns the property, um, they've had the, the various buildings, uh, get, you know, permitted throughout the years. Um, this one, it, in relation to the, to the setback for the DO25, which is a 200-foot setback, there is a provision in the code for an approval, if appropriate, um, which in this case I, we think it is actually for the whole uh, complex it is because the 200-foot setback is really primarily for the large, taller, the, the multi-story, the, the high-rise, five-story buildings. Um, and with these lower buildings, we've the setbacks have been the, the 50 foot to the property line. This is within the 50 foot at about 64 feet. So um, it matches the rest of the, the campus setbacks. The building height is certainly low enough at 14 feet. Um, I think that's it in a nutshell. I'll be happy to answer questions. And Bob is also here for your um, engineering questions. Thank you very much. Mr. Sulkis, do you have comment on the petition? Yeah, uh, Mr. Wicko, can you uh, clarify the amount of time the temporary trailers are in fact going to be temporary? Thank you, sure. Um, it looks like at this point with the planning that we're going through that it'll be a minimum of two years before it, the likelihood of the Hayden building to be, ex the expansion to be complete. Um, it may be longer, so we're asking for a permit to the completion of the Hayden building, and at that time, which is the permanent building, the school, at that time, the trailers will be removed after the CO of the Hayden building, and then students would use the, the new classroom. So a minimum of two, and uh, it could be longer. We could come back, you know, after two years and let you know where we are and ask for an extension or something if we need to, but that's, that's the idea. So are you saying that you are currently working on plans for the Hayden building? Uh, as you know, we're just starting the planning. Uh, I know what yeah. you're working on, but you need to tell the board what you're working on. Okay, yeah, we are currently uh, talking with the city and, and um, the city planner um, regarding uh, three improvements to the, to the campus, one of them being the Hayden Student Center. Um, we're at the zoning level. We're actually, we haven't even finished the, the application set at this point. So we anticipate that to be within a month or two to, to be um, into the city with, with circulation, um, department circulation, and then before you, after that, um, for a, um, spe a, a minor amendment to a, the, the special permit that we have currently. Uh, so, so basically what's happening is they're planning a future expansion. They're working on it now. When these classrooms uh, are complete and the expansion is complete, the temporary trailers will be going away. That's the purpose for the temporary trailers. Thank you, Mr. Sulkis. Thank you. Anything additional, Mr. Sulkis? Are there any questions from the board for the petitioner? Mr. Quish. Back to the, um, the time frame, it seems probably unrealistic that you'll get drawings put out to bid and be constructed in two years. I mean, is it, does it make sense to ask for longer? Uh, we, yeah, we thought two years was appropriate because it wasn't um, too far. Um, forward because we didn't want to overwhelm the board. We we're willing to come back after two years, but it, I mean, if we can get a permit for four years, then that would be a more uh, more concrete and realistic time frame for a true completion. But again, we can keep it at two or three and then come back and kind of let you know where we are with everything if, if the board feels appropriate. It would be kind of a tough spot to be in if the next board didn't approve it, and you were half, half constructed, and you'd have to take your trailers away. Then we would like to um, ask for four years. Uh, Mr. Sulkis, do you have comment on uh, four years versus two years? 
no. <laughs> Thank you. Are there additional questions from the board for the petitioner? Mr. Mead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Um, you got to put the trailers on the existing basketball court. Do yes. they utilize that much now, or is there any other place to put these trailers? Uh, yes, we are proposing to put them on the existing court. The, uh, we don't use the court now. It's been many years. They, um, they use the gymnasium, which the student center, the Hayden building, has. So it, there's basketball and other activities that the children use for recreation, um, basketball particularly. There's other you know, outdoor you know, there's a, there's a climbing wall, there's a jungle gym, there's different, you know, you know, play stations that they have. So we don't, we're not using the basketball, and we do have basketball courts inside the Hayden building that they use. So after the, the timeline and you remove the two trailers, there'll be something else put back in that area or part we, of the new plans? It, we, at this point, there's nothing being considered for that area, so it would be, they would be removed and in, at, the, at that level of destruction because of the foundation, it'll probably be uh, landscaped over. Thank you. You're welcome. Additional questions for the petitioner? Mr. Moore. Is there enough lighting if the trailers are being utilized um, after hours? If, if uh, in any case, if they are going to be used after hours? Yeah, the, the school is, is normal school hours. Um, so in the evening, in the winter, there are lights in that, that whole that, that quadra angle that we're creating, there's lights uh, from the buildings and from site lighting that are existing. And there will be buildings on the light themselves at the, at the deck. So the lighting is adequate with what's there and proposed for the buildings. Are there further questions from the board? Seeing none, does anyone wish to make a motion as to the petition? Mr. Quish. Yes, I would like to make a motion to approve the uh to, but add the um, add it to four years so that there's sufficient time for planning and uh, building the the uh, proposed improvements. Is there a second, Mr. Dolan? Does anyone wish to be heard on the motion? Seeing none, we'll close discussion. Call the question. All in favor of the motion? All opposed. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is 100 Lansdale Avenue, Zone CDD3. Petition of Thomas Lynch Esquire for site plan review approval to expand the Bin 100 restaurant located on Map 22, Block 207, Parcel 55, of which Lansdale Properties LLC is the owner. Good evening, Attorney Lynch. Good evening. Just for the record, my name is Thomas Lynch. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Lynch, Trimbicki & Boynton, and my office is located here in Milford at 63 Cherry Street. And I'm here tonight representing Lansdale Properties, LLC. My client is a real estate development firm out of Scarsdale, New York. One of their uh, prime tenants in the property at 100 Lansdale Avenue is the popular Bin 100 restaurant. <clears throat> and we've filed this application before you and presenting it to you tonight to allow for an expansion of the bin 100 space that's located uh, within the plaza uh, to encompass an additional 924 square feet, taking over a nail salon that was uh, uh, located next door to uh, the restaurant. So uh, there is no new construction that's envisioned. The site plan that was prepared by Ron Wasmer, who's here with me tonight, along with John Whitco, who has prepared the floor plans for the new addition. If I can just go to the, um, the site. I believe we're all familiar where the property is located. <clears throat> it's on uh, the intersection of Route 1 in Devon with Lansdale Avenue. It's a mixed-use building that's located in the CDD3 zone. Uh, it was developed in 1991, construction of a building that consists of some 43,000 square feet. And uh, <clears throat> The parking layout that was uh, put together at the uh, time of development uh, was based upon the then current parking regulations uh, calling for a mixed-use building. I believe it's section 517, which I'll be referencing in a minute. But if you're familiar with the building, um, it's a 
long uh, building that tr you know, basically traverses from the east side to the west uh, parallel with Lansdale Avenue. <clears throat> the Beaver Brook, R Brook Reservoir and the Jonathan Law property is located to the rear of the site. And the way that the property was developed was with the commercial users on the first floor facing towards Lansdale Avenue and the apartments that are located in the rear of the property facing out towards uh, the reservoir. Sheet two of the plan uh, shows the floor plan and the parking count. And <clears throat> basically, as I said, bin 100 occupies the space at the far western end of the building. The Pearl Nail Salon, which consists of 900 square feet, is where the proposed addition is going to be. And I'll go over in just a second our statement of use that was supplied to you with our application. But basically, <clears throat> the restaurant wants to expand using a portion of this area for storage and then the front portion to seat an additional um, roughly 15 to 20 uh, patrons during uh, overflow time or busy hours. If you're familiar with the restaurant, if you've been in there, there's a large dining room to the far westerly end. There's the bar area, uh, basically, as you come in the front door. And this would be space that would <clears throat> be uh, basically expanding the, uh, the bar area and uh, the rear of the kitchen area. The parking count that's shown on there uh, shows that we're uh, coming before you with a request under 517 for some 14 shared spaces. The uh, plans as put together by Ron show the total of 150 spaces uh, that are located on site. If you go by a strict reading of the zoning regulations for all of the uses that are located there, the commercial uses and the residential uses, it would come up to a uh, total of 164 spaces that would be required. But under 517, we are allowed to come before you and state that because a good portion of the commercial space will be used only during the daytime and the uh, nighttime use really will be the restaurant and the residences coming back from work or uh, being there on the weekends. Uh, we feel that the request for the 14 shared spaces is reasonable in light of uh, the zoning regulation. <clears throat> Your file also contains a letter that I believe was issued in 2006 from David. We had a uh, different parking count formula back in 2006 when the uh, clients came before you the last time for an amendment. And specifically, there's uh, the letter that David issued on October 5th of 2006 uh, approving a site plan amend amendment application that had been submitted to address a shortfall of 17 spaces. Between the time that this letter was issued and today, there's been a change in our zoning regulations as it relates to the count for one-bedroom apartments. It used to be that you had to, uh, or the requirement was to have two parking spaces for a one-bedroom apartment. That regulation has now been amended so that the requirement is 1.5 spaces. So actually, what we're coming before you for tonight to allow the expansion of the restaurant use is in fact creating a lesser shortfall than this board approved back in 2006. Again, that shortage was 17 spaces and we're asking for recognition of shared use of 14 spaces between the residences and the commercial use. And again, I referenced uh, previously the statement of use that we had submitted to you. Uh, my client put forth the hours of operation of the other commercial users on the property. And as you can see from that uh, statement, uh, most of them utilize the parking spaces during the daytime hours. Bin 100 operates in the evening hours. So there's a, there's a good uh, situation there where the daytime users are out of there by 5 o'clock and when patrons come in to um, uh, frequent the restaurant and the bar, uh, those are during the evening hours along with the residential users in the back. <clears throat> uh, and again, the uh, plan is for this to be used for overflow use, mo mostly, basically during the fall and into the holiday time when uh, their uh, busiest time of the year is. So this will allow them to accommodate <clears throat> the uh, customers during that time. Other than that, we can answer any questions. As I said, John prepared the floor plan. 
Ron did the site plan. Uh, BIN 100 is a good uh, corporate uh, uh, partner with uh, Milford. Uh, it's a very popular restaurant. Uh, I think that this is an encouragement and recognition of the fact that they do run a good business and uh, this will allow that. So I'd ask that you act favorably on the application. Thank you, Attorney Lynch. Mr. Selkis, do you have comment on the petition? Uh, no, Mr. Lynch uh, did a good job uh, doing a summary. Thank you. Are there questions from the board for the petitioner? Mr. Quish? Yes. Um, is the, uh, there's going to be a doorway from the uh, bar into this new space, or will it be all open? It'll be open. It'll be open, yep. There may be some sort of a partition, but uh, uh, it won't be just a door to go into an additional room. Any other questions from the board for Attorney Lynch? Mr. Mead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Um, the parking spaces for the residents, are they marked just for their use in the back? They are in the back, yeah. They and I've known that because when I go down to try to go to the Foreign High Law football game, that is my favorite place to try to park, and uh, in the back there, those spaces do have signage, so. Are they marked just for residents? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can't guarantee for you, Ed, that the sign is adhered to uh, all the times, but uh, there are there is signage back there saying that those spaces are for the uh, residents. Additional questions for Attorney Lynch? Seeing none, does anyone wish to uh, make a motion as to the petition? Mr. Dolan. I'll make a motion to um, approve as presented. Is there a second? Oh, Mr. Moore. Is there any discussion? Anyone wish to be heard on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call the question to a vote. All in favor of the motion to approve, aye. Say, say aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion passes. Thank okay. you. Thanks so much. The next item on the agenda is 151 Hillside Avenue, Zone R5. Petition of Bob Potter of, for Coastal Management Site Plan Review Approval to construct a single-family residence on Map 49, Block 795, Parcel 80, of which Bob Potter is the owner. Good evening, sir. Hi, how are you? Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking for approval for uh, Coastal Site Plan Review to build a single-family house on what's possibly the smallest buildable lot in Milford. Um, Tom Lynch actually represented me when I uh, went to zoning for, I had to get a variance, and that was approved back in December. Um, I know there was a request for uh, a survey. I don't have that with me, but I could uh, bring that in later this week to Phyllis and uh, free to answer any questions. Mr. Sulkis, do you have comment on the petition as it is uh, presently constituted? <sighs> Uh, you have a copy, I believe, of uh, Mr. Harris's report. I'll just read to you uh, the planning and zoning comments. The request satisfies the criteria of Section 5.12 of the zoning regulations. Staff recommends approval in accordance with the pending reports from Engineering and Public Works. Uh, no permit shall be issued until all comments from Engineering and Public Works have been satisfied. Uh, we actually got a report today uh, from engineering, so there is a, a laundry list of items that the applicant, uh, if approved tonight, uh, would need to adhere to. Thank you. Are there uh, questions from the board for the petitioner? Seeing none, does anyone uh, wish to make a motion uh, as to whether to approve the petition this evening. Mr. Grant. I make a motion to approve uh, the single family residence at 151 Hillside Avenue. Will you be making that motion with the conditions as indicated in the report? Uh, with the conditions that are indicated in the report. Is there a second to the motion? Mr. Dolan. Does anyone wish to be heard on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call the question to a vote. All in favor of the motion to approve with conditions as contained in the report? All right. 
All opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 131R Milford Point Road, Zone R5, petition of Ron Dorelio, uh, architect for coastal management site plan review approval to construct a single family residence on map six, block 84, map 40, of which Carmen Stefano is the owner. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ron Dorelio. I'm the architect for the project. I, I have an office at my home, 69 Seskis Drive, Milford, Connecticut. Um, we're asking for the uh, board to approve our application for the CAM site plan review. And the application has been reviewed by uh, city departments. And other than some minor technical items they cited, there doesn't appear to be any compliance issues. Uh, the construction will be limited to a site that's already developed and uh, the proposed construction should have no adverse effects on the uh, surrounding properties or the coastal resources. Uh, the property currently has two single family dwellings on it. The house closest to Milford Point Road will remain as it is and the house closest to the beach is fire damaged. Um, and unusable at this time. So we are proposing to tear down the fire damaged house and replace it with a new house. We will uh, replace the structure with a new structure, uh, placing it in approximately the same location as the existing and approximately the same length of around 50 feet. The new house will be built to comply with all zoning setbacks, lot and building coverage requirements, and flood regulations. Uh, if you look on the zoning grid, which is on the uh, right-hand side of the site plan, you will see that our uh, lot coverage drops to 24% from the existing 37%, and the building coverage will drop to 23% from the current 24%. This is mainly due to the removal of, uh, the proposed removal of concrete patios and wood decking uh, and walkways that cover much of the site now. The property has a side yard setback variance of 9.7 uh, granted in 1989. Uh, but we are proposing to keep the new house at 10 feet, the corner of the foundation, 10 feet from the property line. The house will be elevated on concrete piers, have an open foundation uh, to allow the water, flood water to move freely underneath. And the stair enclosure will have breakaway walls. Um, we're provide, we will be providing required drainage for storm water by installing some stone beds on each side of the house. Currently, there is not a drainage system on the property. Uh, we're proposing to install a concrete driveway apron at the road. Uh, there is not one there now. Uh, we will be adding a large area for more off-street parking and plus we'll be able to park two vehicles under the proposed house. Uh, the house structure and deck will both be above the VE 14 flood elevation. Uh, the, if you look at the site plan, the deck is in the VE 14 zone and the house is in the VE 13 zone. Uh, we're proposing the finished floor height at 16, elevation 16. Uh, so the whole structure will be above the required flood zone and the required freeboard space. On the rear of the house is a three-story tiered deck. We will be using a six-foot spiral staircase that will uh, reduce the bulk of the construction and 
uh, allow for flood waters to flow through the deck area easily. The uh, spiral stair is approximately 99 feet from the coastal jurisdiction line. The uh, top floor will be contained within six roof gables and it fits within the definition of a habitable attic in the state building code. Um, the foundation design uh, should be on the stapled to the last two pages of your documents. It's a uh, helical pier foundation with concrete piers above grade. Um, and so that's all I have for you. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Sulkis, do you have comments on the petition? Uh, reading from Mr. Harris's report, uh, the request satisfies the criteria of Section 5.12 of the Zoning Regulations. Staff recommends approval pending report from Public Works. Prior to the issuance of a permit, all comments from Public Works and en Engineering shall be satisfied, and a sedimentation and erosion control plan shall be submitted and reviewed prior to the issuance of a zoning permit. And I believe we also have conditions from the uh, city engineer. Is that correct? We have those in our, in our, on our packet? Conditions to be satisfied? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, are there any questions from the board for the petitioner? Seeing none, does anyone wish to make a motion as to the petition? Seeing none, I will make a, or I'm sorry, Mr. Dolan. I defer to Mr. Dolan. Um, I'll make a motion to approve um, as presented with the um, stipulation that all of the recommendations and comments um, uh, read into the record by Mr. Sulkis be adhered to. Is there a second? Pardon? Mr. Panzella. Do you wish to well, amend, oh, amend, and amend as well the motion? As, as well as the um, conditions put forth by the city engineer. Is there a second to the revised, uh, Mr. Grant? Uh, is there any comment on the motion as made by Mr. Dolan? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. All opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item that appears on the printed agenda is a proposed regulation change, Article 5, Section 5.3.7.16. Uh, Mr. Sulkis, I believe there is a, a, a change or a modification. Yeah, I'm told to tell you that it will be on a future agenda in compliance with Connecticut General Statutes. Thank you. Next on the agenda are liaison reports. Is there anyone here this evening wishing to give a liaison report from the board? Seeing none, we'll move on to the regulation subcommittee. Mr. Grant, do you have an update for us? Uh, yes, you have uh, passed out this evening two regulation proposed changes. Uh, one is to section 4.1.16.2, uh, which is uh, dealing with uh, buildings being constructed within 25 feet of the seasonal high water level. Uh, there's a couple of items basically that are in the in the existing text that are being proposed to be uh, removed. Uh, they are covered by Inwin Letlands and they're uh, also really not part of what we need to do for zoning. So the proposal is to remove some of the wording and rewrite it. Uh, I would like to recommend that we take and send this on to the different agencies for their review. Uh, the second one is change, uh, wording change. Yeah. 
to uh, section 10.1 as more of a clarification. Um, basically, at this particular point in time, uh, the zoning board uh, can receive outside uh, recommendations as we have just seen this evening. Uh, and what this does is it kind of clarifies the existing wording that gives the board uh, a little bit clearer definition on how to proceed with those type of requests. So again, I'd also recommend that we send this on to for out to the different agencies for them to review and get back to us. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the furthering on of uh, the two regulation changes. Is there a second? Mr. Quish? Does anyone wish to be heard on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. All opposed? The motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Next item uh, on the agenda is the approval of minutes from October 2nd, 2016, which we have all received. Does anyone wish to make a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. Panzella, is there a second? Mr. Dolan, anyone wish to be heard on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed? The motion passes, the minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is the chair's report. I do not have a report this evening. And the final item on our agenda is staff report. Mr. Sulkis, do you have a report this evening? Uh, not this evening. Then at this point, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Mead, is there a second to the motion? Mr. Grant, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Thank you.